Good morning, family. Watchwoman 65, Lisa Boyce here with another Rapture Talk. Yesterday we talked about the um, meaning of falling away in the book of uh, Thessalonians, and um, I'm going to go over a little bit of that today um, and what it means exactly. Well, you know what it means. I mean, we went over that already, but it puts a different spin on the rapture. So it's an urgency. It's more of an urgency. It's more of an excitement now. And that's the purpose of doing these videos on the rapture is to get everybody excited about the soon departure on rapture airlines. That's what I like to call it. But anyway, I'm going to go through a mid-trib, the mid-tribulation rapture theory, and how this is another one that's not biblically sound at all. Now, remember, there are four main views on the rapture. The four views are the pre-tribulation rapture, the mid-tribulation rapture, the pre-wrath view, which is what I went over uh, a few days ago, and the post-tribulation, which is what I went over yesterday. The people want to say, well, you know, while we're here on earth, God will protect us. Um, from what? Because that's not protection when you're walking around during God's wrath in such fear that you don't know what's going to happen. That's not protection. I think... Um, that's what they want to say. The people who believe in a post-trib and the people who believe in a mid-trib and the pre-wrath is that, yeah, we're protected. We're under, it's like, so in other words, you're going to be walking around with the rest of the people in chaos, but you're going to be under a bubble. That's not how God works. He's going to take us out of here. But I want to go over this with you. Um, about the mid-trib. They believe that the timing that the rapture will happen in the middle of the tribulation period. So in other words, at the beginning of the tribulation period, we're going to still be here according to their view. The mid-tribulation rapture proponent believes that the rapture will occur prior to the great tribulation which is the last three and a half years of the seven year tribulation period. This places three and a half years between the rapture of the church and the second coming of the church. One of the problems of the mid tribulation timing is that they believe that the church will go through three and a half years of the tribulation period. But then he comes and removes us prior to the great tribulation, like I said. Now, the difference between the mid-tribbers and the pre-wrath is the pre-wrath people don't believe that the, uh, that the wrath is going to start in the first three and a half years of the tribulation. They don't believe in that. They believe that we're going to still be here and his wrath is not going to be poured out until the last half of the three and a half year period. Both views are wrong. These two views on the mid-trib and the pre-wrath are similar, except for that. Now, they would assume that's if they think that we're not going to be removed for the first three and a half years, this would assume that the church will undergo some of God's wrath, but not the worst of it. See, this is where the mid-tribulation mid people and the pre-wrath people are similar. This is where they're similar. They would assume, this would assume that the church will undergo some of God's wrath. This is completely contradictory to the rest of the Bible. God has never, ever 
listen very carefully. God has never ever poured out his wrath on the righteous. I said that yesterday. This also flies in the face of the fact that the entire tribulation period is the wrath of God. See, both the mid-trib people and the pre-wrath people want to split this up and round it off to being the first three and a half years, it's not going to be that bad. That's wrong. Matter of fact, it doesn't even say that in the Bible. The mid-tribulationists will often try to confuse when the wrath of God starts. Like I said, the scroll encompasses as the judgments of revelation, which are the seal the trumpets, and the bold judgments. So there is no sound and theological way to conclude that the church will go through some of the wrath of God, but not the worst of it. This is simply not correct at all. Their views are wrong, okay? Another fundamental problem, another not only fundamental problem, but a foundation problem with the uh, mid-tribulation rapture view is that it tries to say that the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 15, 52 is the same trumpet mentioned in Revelation eleven fifteen. And the fact is the last trumpet mentioned in Revelation eleven fifteen is the last in the series of trumpets but it's not chronologically the last trumpet as Matthew 24, 31 would say. It mentions, uh, Matthew 24, 31 mentions a trumpet at the commencement of Christ's kingdom. Further, the trumpet describing the rapture in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 is a trumpet call of God to gather his children, his elect. Whereas the trumpet call of Revelation 11.15 is one that is foretelling of judgment. Let me read that to you. Revelation 11.15. Revelation 11, 15, and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms, excuse me, of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, excuse me, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That is foretelling judgment. The purpose of these trumpets call the pur the purpose of these trumpet calls is different, and therefore they're not the same. Further, the scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5 9 tells us that the church is not destined to wrath. Let me read that. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. It says, for God hath not appointed us it to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not for the church. It's not for his believers to go through wrath, period. This has become the church. This is because the church has been made righteous by grace, through faith in Christ alone. We are believers in the finished work of Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. God never, and I'm going to repeat this, and I'm going to re probably repeat this until the day we're raptured. God never pours out wrath on the righteous. Never. I said the other day that people must be glutton for punishment. They must want to be punished. Because I don't understand how they're coming up with this view. 
People really don't know how to rest in the grace of God. We are secure. We are safe. We are saved in Jesus Christ alone. There is no wrath coming on us, the believers of Christ. We are out of here before the man of sin is revealed. That's right here. We went through this. We are gone before the man of sin is revealed. Second Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And we went through what the falling away really is. Because if you really want to know the truth, apostasy has been since Paul wrote this letter to, Thess to the church of Thessalonia. Apostasy has been around since the beginning of time. I'm going to read that again. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and then the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshiped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, I'm going to jump down. Let me, wait, let me read this. Let me go down to verse 7. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked one be revealed. We have to be gone. We have to be gone in order for this demon to be let loose. It makes perfect sense that we have to be gone because the prayers of the righteous man availeth much. And we could keep that at bay, not stop it, but keep it at bay. So it makes sense that the church is gone so he can let loose on the earth. There is no post-tribulation rapture. There is no mid-tribulation rapture. There is no pre-wrath rapture. There is only a pre-tribulation rapture. The church is gone before the man of sin is revealed. It's plain as day. I mean, you really have to get that. It is as plain as day. Further in the scripture, like I said, about uh, this verse right here, we're not destined to wrath, period. And to say that we have, we experience wrath is to contradict God's ways and character. Like I said before, and I will say this until the day we're raptured, God is not a wife beater. He's not going to beat up the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, or have us beat up, or have us go through, and like some people want to say, well, we have to go through this time of wrath and testing. That's the, that, that's the biggest crock of crap I've ever heard. <laughs> the mid-tribulationist tries to say that only the bold judgments of Revelation are the wrath of God. But this flies in the face of the fact that all judgments, whether they're seals, trumpets, bowls, are all interconnected. 
By this, we mean that one series of judgments introduces the next series of judgments. It's all interconnected. The seventh seal introduces the first trumpet, and the seventh trumpet introduces the first bowl. There is no logical theological way to set aside one series of judgments as being separate from the other, especially when we have determined that the entire seven-year tribulation period is the wrath of God. In summary, the mid-tribulation rapture timing view is not sound, it's not biblical. Like the post-tribulation and the pre-wrath, they're not sound and they're not biblical. There is no logical explanation that they give. None. We are not going through wrath, period. Don't listen to that. Anybody who feeds you that crock of crap is wrong. God has not destined us to wrath. It's right there in the Word. I mean, to, for them to come out and say something different, it's contradicting the Word of God, period. No, we're not going to be sitting here on earth under some bubble while everybody else goes through hell. We're going to be taken out of here. The only view that is sound and takes into consideration the entire big picture of the Bible prophecy is the pre-tribulation rapture. We are gone. This verse alone in 2 Thessalonians and 1 Thessalonians and let me read that one for you. That should put all these other views to bury them in the grave. This right here. For if I believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall become, shall be caught up, shall be caught up. together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Where is the comfort in telling someone that you're going to go through the first half of the tribulation, the first half of God's wrath? Oh, but you're going to be protected because you're going to be walking around in a bubble. No, that's not true. You're not going to be here. You're not going to be here. I hope this has helped. I hope these series have helped ease your mind. And I hope they've gotten you excited about the rapture. I'm going to go on. I'm going to be hitting more stuff as time goes on. But I want you to be excited because our time is short. The time is limited. I don't know what's going to happen. I know something is about to come forth. Like I said before, I still hold to that view. I still hold to that feeling. It's still there. And we're not going to be here much longer. Praise God. So anyway, have a nice day.